Hello everyone, this is Jennifer from Jennifer Biederman Jewelry. Welcome back to another tutorial. We are going to be making a Cellini stitch. Um, it's just a peyote stitch using different size beads and look at the wonderful effect it does. I'm bringing out two little sample pieces that I made. This is just going in the round and the round and the round and you can do it as long as you want to make a necklace or a bracelet. Uh, this one has a different effect. We can change direction and it makes such a wonderful effect. You could do this as a bracelet also to have that point in the middle or do several points. Um, also a necklace would be really nice too to have that little focal uh, point in the middle. Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to do this and then to change direction. It's gonna be really, really easy, I promise you. Um, so here is your material list. Um, I'm using four different sizes. You can use uh, three sizes. You can use anything you want. You can use any type of beads you want, but as long as it's a gradual going up and down, but I'll show you that. So what I'm using for materials to make this is I need a size 15. I'm just using a galvanized silver. Um, I'm going to use two colors of size 11s. I'm using a red. This is a uh, transparent garnet luster red. And I'm also going to use a size 11 galvanized silver. For my 8s, uh, I'm just using one 8 and it's going to be a red color. And for my crystal, I'm just, I'm going to be using this blue. So I think the blues and the reds go well together. I hope this goes a nice color combination. I'm not good with picking colors. Um, so this one is a three millimeter. Um, you can use a four millimeter also. Now also what I wanna show you, if you don't wanna use crystals, you can stick with this and then don't add the crystal or you can use a round. You can use whatever you want, okay? So those are the beads you are gonna be using the sizes and of course you're going to need some beading thread i'm using uh, this uh, bk black beading thread it's a nice strong thread uh, it doesn't fray very easily and it's uh, pretty hard to break if you don't have this use fire line and i would suggest using a six pound or an eight pound fire line you will need a beading needle i'm using a size 11 but you can definitely use a size 10 or 12 for this project and of course you're going to need some scissors and a bead mat um, so thread your needle with as much thread as you're comfortable working with because you will be adding um, so thread your needle and get your materials together and then we're going to get started on this fun project Okay, so we have our materials in front of us and I put them in a row of how I'm going to be picking them up. Um, so we're going to start by picking up four 15s. Two red 11s. Two silver 11s. Two red 8s and two three millimeter bicone crystals. So I have graduated my, how it goes small to big. Now we're gonna go down again. So I'm gonna pick up two size eights, two silver 11s, two red 11s, and that's it. Because I already have my four on this side. Why did I put four 15s? Because here I want it to bend nicely. If I only put two 11, uh, two 15s, it's going to be pretty stiff. This is a stiff, can be a stiff piece. So uh, I want the smaller beads. I want the 15s to be um, have more of those so that it bends properly. Okay. So you've picked up your series of beads. We will bring it down to our tip to our the end here. 
and leave yourself, you know, about a three inch tail, just something to hang on to. And then we're going to just sew back through these beads, creating a circle. Now, if you can get through all these beads, you're very lucky. If not, just do it in, uh, whoops, do it in uh, a couple of passes. Now I'm going to go until I reach my tail. Okay, here. And what I'm going to do here is just tie a little knot. I'm not going to worry about um, sewing back through this because I'm going to be sewing through this piece. Again, it's going to be pretty strong. So I'm just tying a couple of knots. Okay. So here's our little circle of beads. So now what you want to do is you want to decide where your step up is going to be. Okay. My step up is going to be when I come out of my 15s, which is this last 15 here. So I'm coming out of this 15 and we're just going to do a peyote. Now to do the Cellini stitch to have this um, effect here, pay attention to what beads you're coming out of because that's what you're picking up. So I'm coming out of a 15. I'm going to pick up a 15. I'm going to skip this red 11 and I'm going to go into the next. and pull. I'm coming out of a red. I'm going to pick up a red 11. Skipping the next 11 and sewing through the next. Coming out of a silver 11, going to pick up that same bead. Skipping the next 8, going into the next. Coming out of this eight, skip a crystal and go into the next. Now be careful when you go through this crystal here because if you pull too tight like this and you start yanking over like this, your thread can break because it's a sharp edge. Coming out of the crystal, picking up a crystal, skipping that size eight, and going into the next. Okay, it's going to be fiddly to start. It's going to look a little weird, but don't worry, everything's going to come together. Coming out of this eight, picking up an eight, skipping the silver 11, going into the next. Coming out of the silver 11, picking up a silver 11, skipping that red 11, going into the next. Okay. Now we're at our 15s. We're going to really pay attention here. Okay. Coming out of a red 11, picking up the same bead. Going to skip the next 15, go into the next 15. Right here is where you need to pay attention. Now, pick up, I'm coming out of a 15, pick up a 15. This is our step up, okay? So I kind of, you know, feel like I want to just go up into this upper B, but we have to step up. So same concept. Pick up your 15, skip a 15, go into the next 15, and whoops go into the next 15 and then that upper bead this is to get in position for the next round so always remember your 15s or your last 15 is going to be your step up if that's where you chose with that's where you started and pull now i pull tight and i created a knot so we're a little tangle. So now your beads 
are looking like this. It's actually going to turn into something. Okay, let's continue. Coming out of a 15, picking up a 15. Now we're just going into the upper beads. And we're going to start to pull a little bit tight here so that because we want this to start to cup. <coughs> Excuse me. Coming out of this bead, picking up the same bead, going into that upper next bead. Coming out of this bead, picking up the same bead, going into the upper next bead. Coming out of this bead, picking up the same bead, skipping this bead, going into the upper bead. Coming out of the crystal, this is essentially it. This is a stitch. Coming out of here, going into the upper eight. Coming out of the eight, pick up an eight, going into the next 11, sticking up. Pick up the 11, go into the next. Remember, mantra for this, whatever bead you're coming out of, is the bead you're picking up. Coming out of this red 11, picking it up, going into my next 15, sticking up. I'm getting ready for my step up. Pull. Okay, let me put it to the side here. You can see, step up. Coming out of this 15, pick up 15, go into the next 15 and the next 15. This is your step up, ready for the new round. Now, it's going to start looking like this. It's going to start uh, as you're going until you make the turn with the crystal. Once your crystal ends up over here, it's going to start just going this way, like flat, because of the size of the beads. But just keep going. Now the work is cupped and you can't really see stick up beads here. So let's continue. Coming out of a 15, pick up a 15, skipping the next bead, going into the next. Now you're also going to notice as you're doing this, the beads are going to start going in the middle. Careful not to pick up the beads on the outer side. Pull. Coming out of that eight, red, uh, sorry, coming out of the 11, red, picking up the same bead. I'm skipping the next one, going into the next. Picking up an 11, skipping that eight, going into the next. Now this is a stitch that you can just watch TV and um, just keep picking up your beads. But I'm telling you, you do have to pay attention. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I've been doing this a long time and I did a whole piece here and I had to actually cut it because I, I missed a bead and I missed the whole color. So you do have to pay attention uh, doing this. Coming out of the eight, Picking up an eight, going through that bicone crystal. Help the beads sit on top. Coming out of a bicone, pick up a bicone. And then skip this one and go on the next. 
See how it's sticking out to the side? Just help it sit up. And we're almost at our step up. Actually, I do like this color combination. So many fun colors you can do with this, like greens and reds and all kinds of colors. Summer's coming, so you can make a lot of these. Going into my 15. Coming out of a 15, picking up a 15. Now I'm going to step up. Okay, you really have to t watch here. Coming out of this one, skipping this one, going into the next 15, and step up. Now we're ready for the next round. So if you're just starting this, if this is the first time you're doing it, pick some contrast beads so you know where you know you're stepping up because if they're all the same color you're going to be frustrated so here i'm uh, coming out of a 15 pick up a 15 and keep going now see how so see how it's going flat looks like a flat piece just keep going pay attention to your beads see how it, this one here is sticking kind of in the inside just pay attention go around go around go around go around and then I'm going to show you how to make the turn. Okay, so I'll be back. All right, now before I show you the turn, um, I, I'm editing this in, by the way, because I've completed the piece. But um, the length that you're going to be hearing me saying in the video is six inches, six inches. But when I finished it, I realized that I fell short. And... Um, I don't do Cellini stitch every day. I don't do these big tubular pieces every day. So it's not like measuring a flat piece. You have to take into consideration the, um, the width of the piece versus the length because you need to get your circumference. Now I'm going to show you a formula that I came up with. Uh, well, came up with. I actually Googled it because um, there is math involved when you're making this. Um, now, when I sh at the beginning I showed you, you saw two circles, and then I was going to show you the turn, right? Now, what I did was I added, I had to add a length, because my six inches fell an inch short of what I really needed. So I'm going to give you a nice formula so that you can have it I write it down, keep it on hand, because if you like to do these turbul turbular uh, pieces, which I think are fabulous, and I'm going to start doing more of these, you'll, you will need this formula. Okay, so I'm going to show you that. Your piece may be different, a different length. Like I said, regular flat piece, not considering the clasp, would be six inches for me. Okay, you could be seven inches. Now, here's the formula. You need to figure out the circumference in millimeters. So for those of you, because not everyone knows how to do this, a lot of people fell asleep in math class in high school, including myself. So just Google it, okay, because I Googled it. And if you know it, more power to you. Convert your inches to circumference in millimeters. Google inches to circumference. That's it. It's going to give it to you automatically in millimeters. So you just put 6 inches, and then this is what I got, 37.6 millimeters. I rounded it up to 38. And then here's the formula to figure out the length. Uh, now actually have to figure out the width okay so just take your ruler and measure the widest part of your piece which is going to be right here from here to here if you have calipers great if not just use a ruler 
mine came to 20 millimeters. So I'm taking 38 plus 20 millimeters, gives me a number, and I'm going to times that by pi. Pi is 3.14. That gives me a number in millimeters, which is 182.12. I convert in millimeters back into inches, and that gives me 7.16. Now, I'm not going to worry about those 1 6 here, because I did round up over here. I'm just going to round down and make it an even 7 inches. So from my 6 inches, I have to add another inch to compensate for the width. Make sense? Now, right here, just pause the video and write this down, okay? And then I'm going to show you the turn. So to start, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, there's an easy way. Well, they're both easy, but... The first thing I did was I completed my round and I did my step up out of my 15. I'm just going to move in a little bit. The easier way, really, is to just change, to change the direction. Instead of picking up what I'm coming out of, I'm going to pick up what's coming. Make sense? So I'm not picking up the 15 here. I'm just going to, I'm going to be picking up a size 11 red bead, then a size 11 silver, then a size 8, then a crystal, okay? Um, however, my step ups are going to be changing as I go. So that's a little bit of the downside. You have to really pay attention where your step up is going to be because it's not going to be in the same spot every time you go around. Now, the other way is you sew your way, like I'm coming out of here, this 15, where I stepped up, I would sew down this bead, then this bead, then this bead, then move over here, and then come out of this bead, the 11. And then uh, whatever I'm coming out of is what I'm picking up. So it's staying the same, uh, but you're just going in the different direction, okay? But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up what's coming because I don't want to sew back and go in the other direction. So now I'm coming out of the 15. My red 11's coming, so that's what I'm going to pick up. Now I'm going to do a couple of rounds with you here to show you where the step-ups are, okay? So here I'm going to sew through. Now see what that did? That created the little turn where it's happening, okay? So now I'm going into a silver 11. I'm picking up a silver 11. Going into an 8, picking up an 8. Going into a crystal, picking up a crystal. Make sure this is sitting up. Going into an eight, picking up an eight. Going into an 11, picking up my silver 11. Going into a red 11, picking up a red 11. Going into a 15, picking up a 15. Okay, now pay attention here because our step up is coming. So I'm coming out of this 15, I'm going into a 15, I'm picking up a 15, and then my step up is coming out of the red. Okay. So picking up a 15, going into this next, skip, wait a second. Okay, coming out of this 15, 
skipping this 15 and then going into this 15. Okay, it's a little tight and it's a little small. And I'm going up my eight. Okay. That's my step up. Again, the step ups are gonna move. So let's do that again. I'm going into an 11, my silver 11. So I'm gonna pick up that one. Going into an eight, picking up an eight. Going into a bicone crystal, going to pick up that one. See what's happening? Now I'm going into an eight, so I'm going to pick up that eight. Going into a silver 11, going to pick up a silver 11. Going into a red 11, picking that bead up. Getting closer to our step up, which has moved. Please don't let this confuse you, okay? Going into a 15, picking up 15. <coughs> Excuse me. Coming, see, oh, you have to pay attention. I was saying coming out of 15, pick up a 15. No, going into a 15, pick up a 15. Going into a red, pick up a red, and then our step up is the silver. You'll notice because the bead is really close to each other, so you'll know that's your step up. So going into a red, pick up the red. Go directly up into the next bead. Let's do that again. Pick up a, an eight going into an eight. Pick up a crystal. Go into the crystal. Now my written patterns are going to be really detailed. Okay, not big long paragraphs, just very straightforward, which be to go into with very nice close-up pictures. Um, and when the step up moves, I'm gonna be taking pictures of that, <laughs> of each row, so that you, you're not guessing and get frustrated. Okay, coming, whoops, going into the eight, pick up the eight. Going into the silver 11, pick up the silver 11. Going into the red 11, pick up that one. Going into a 15, pick up a 15. Going into a 15, pick up a 15. Going into a red 11, pick up that red 11. See how my step up moved? Now it's going to be easy. Well, just like I said, pay attention. Now, this red is right close to this 11. So I'm going to pick up 
the silver 11 go through this 11. Now I can't really make a mistake because, well, I could, I could try and fit that in there, but it's not going to fit. And then if I come out of there and I say, okay, well, here's an eight, so I'm going to pick up an eight. That's not going to fit in there. It's all going to be all weird looking. So you're going to know that's your step up. Okay. So it kind of moves one beat ahead every time you go around. Okay, so cut going into a silver 11, pick up that silver 11. And then go directly up through these two beads. And look at that, it's already shaping. What a great uh, effect, I love this. Okay, so you get the gist of the step ups when we've turned around, continue along, do it for about an inch, and then I'm gonna make my turn once I reach an inch here when my crystals meet here. And one, one here and one there. And then I'm gonna make my turn again. So it'll be pretty neat for a bracelet because you're gonna be having turns, zigzaggies going around the wrist rather than them be hidden on, uh, like I showed you if I did it an inch at a time. Uh, sorry, two inches here. So continue that and then we are gonna make our turn again. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna show you how to taper this off put a clasp or put a wire through. We'll do, uh, we'll try to do both, show you what, well, how to put this whole thing together. All right, see you back in about an inch. It's time. Okay, I'm back and I did decide to change something a little bit. So hopefully you watch the whole video before you start the actual project. Remember I said I want to do my turn when my crystal meets here. Um, I don't, I, I just realized that I don't want the points all in like this. I want them to alternate. So I want my turn to be on the back side. Now, it's not exactly, okay, and I'm going to take my grandmother's um, saying, she's a knitter, she's not a beater, she was, she's not with us anymore. Uh, she always said, uh, à peu près. With the, she's from France, she's French. So what does that mean? It's approximate, don't worry about it. So in print knitting, you have to be pretty precise. And it was always à peu près, à peu près. Okay, so we're gonna do à peu près, uh, approximate. Okay, because I'm, I'm not a bead counter. I not. Uh, please don't leave me comments. How many beads did you use in this bracelet? I did not count, I'm not going to count. Uh, but when I put your kits together, uh, since I'm a à peu près kind of girl, you're going to get uh, a lot more than you need. Okay. So I want my turn to be over here. I'm making sure that my step up isn't happening over here or over here. I want my step up to be the 15s. So I'm still moving along going into the bead I'm going into. I'm picking up a 15 because I'm going into a 15. Now here, my next 15 is this one because now I have to step up. So now I finished my round. Now I'm gonna change direction. And this is gonna be my step up. So now whatever I'm coming out of is what I'm picking up. See how simple? Pick up a 15. And we want to go into this eight. Uh, not the eight, I'm I'm because I have two reds. The eleven. Red. Whatever we're coming out of is what we're picking up. See the little turn happening? Coming out of a red 11, going into a silver 11. Going 
Oh, see, now I'm getting confused. Coming out of a silver 15, uh, silver 11, going into the red 8. I have to change my uh, mindset right now. Okay, coming out of a red 8, picking up a red 8, going into the crystal. And because I need to reset my brain, I'm going to say this out loud because I don't want to pick up the wrong bead. Coming out of a, uh, a crystal, picking up a crystal, going into the 8. Coming out of an 8, pick up an 8, go into the silver 11. Coming out of the silver 11, pick up a silver 11, go into the red 11. Coming out of the red 11, pick up a red 11, and go into the 15. Now it's exactly the way we started at the beginning. Coming out of a 15, picking up a 15. Are you telling me? Okay, yeah, one here. And step up, and my step up is always going to be here. It's not going to be moving around because we're going in the other direction. Now in position to start a new round. See, so now my crystals are turning and I do want it to be alternating. So uh, let's measure that. From here, it's about three quarters of an inch when I started uh, the new, no wait, no, it's actually an inch. Right, so this was maybe a little bit more than an inch. It is a little bit more. It's an inch and a half. Okay. Jennifer's brain. Sorry. Anyway, continue. Do it for an inch or when it's coming, your point is over here this time. And then do the turn. Make sure you do the turn when you're coming out of your 15s, like we did over here. So I am going to finish this and to the length that I want, which for me is going to be 6 inches. For you, it could be 7 inches or 5 inches. Just take into consideration at about an inch and a half approximately for the class because we are going to be moving a little bit on over here to kind of close this up a little bit and uh, put the clasp on. So see you back uh, when I've done my full six inches. Okay, so I have done my length. I have a full seven inches approximately. And you see these zigzags? They're, they're alternating back and forth and they're not all exact. They don't, you don't have to worry about being exact. If anything, it gives it more interest so this one uh, is a little bit further ahead than this one. This one's a bit further ahead than this one, and so on. So I did uh, five turns, and I lengthened uh, my end here I, when I added some beads where I started. And what we're going to do now is we're going to close this up. Not completely close up, because we need to add our clasp. And the clasping I'm going to do because um, I like to keep its shape um, and I don't ever want this to collapse, which it won't. It's pretty solid. But I just cut myself the length of stainless steel or if you have any type of silver wire or copper wire, it doesn't matter. But I'm using 18 gauge. So it's 18 gauge and up, not too thick, but definitely not too thin. And I cut myself, if this is seven inches, I cut myself about a nine and a half inch, 10 inch piece. And we're going to create this loop. And uh, I didn't do this side yet, so I can show you. But first off, what we are going to do is we're going to close up this hole. Not completely, but just enough to fit that wire in. Now... It really doesn't matter which bead at this point I'm exiting, okay? 
but I'm just going to continue the sequence. So I'm coming out of a, of a um, crystal, so I'm going to pick up a crystal. Great, on my first pass, I'm, I'm, I'm tangling my thread. Okay, so all we're doing now is decreasing. So this is my step up here. So I'm not going to step up. I'm just going to pick up a, an eight and I'm just going through the next bead. I really, it, you really don't have to be too precise over here. Just, you know, I don't want it to look weird, but it's just follow me here. Okay. So I'm coming out of this uh, silver 11 and I put this bead in. So what I'm going to do is not pick up a bead and I'm just going to sew through the next bead. So that will cinch that up. I am coming out of this red 11. I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to go through my 15. I'm not going to pick up a 15. I'm going to go through the next 15. I'm not going to pick up a 15 after that. I'm just going to go through the next red 11. So I went through three beads and I'm pulling. So that's going to start closing it. And here I'm going to pick up a red 11. I'm going through that silver 11. I'm going to pick up a silver 11. going to go through that 8. Now here, I'm not picking up any crystals, okay? So right now, if I pick up an 8, I'm going to go through the crystal, but I am not going to pick up any beads here. I'm just going to go through my crystal, pull, and I'm going to go through that 8 and pull. See? Now, coming out of this 8, I will pick up an 8. I'm don't need to go through this one here. I'm just going to skip that one and go directly through the next one. And I'm coming out of this one. I'm not going to pick up any beads. I'm just going to go through the next one sticking up. And I think I'll pick up, uh, just take a look to see if you think you need to pick up a bead or not. Pick up the silver 11. I'm going to go through that next one sticking up. And then I'm going to go through the next 11, not picking up beads. And now I'm going to pick up an 11. And I'm not going to worry about this crystal. I'm just going to go through that 8 and the next one. Pull. And you know what? That's it for me. I'm going to close that up. Now, I'm just let me tighten this up a bit so you can see what it looks like. And I'm just going to move in a little bit so you can see. So I have an itty bitty bitty hole right here. That's it. And I didn't really pay attention to, okay, I need to skip this bead, go through two beads, pick up a bead, go through two beads, pick up a bead. Don't worry about that. It looks nice. It's still going in a spiral. So you have this on this side and look at this side. It looks slightly different. No worries. It's handmade. It's not machine made. So that's it. All right. So now what you're going to do is uh, reinforce, go this, you do need to go through your beads, tie off some knots, go through your beads, tie off some knots, and then cut your thread. And then you're done your piece. And now we're going to do the clasp. So I'll be right back. At the beginning of this video, I did tell you I'm going to show you two ways to do a clasp. So I didn't cut my thread yet. I did reinforce, reinforce, 
and I'm just coming out of a bead. Okay, one of the top beads here. Now, if you don't have any wire, and uh, then don't worry, pick up whatever bead you're coming out of, doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter if you're going to pick up your 8s or your 11s or your crystals, really, doesn't matter. But you will pick up about 10 seed beads if it's size 11. And then you're going to just create a loop. So I'm coming out over, coming out this way. So I would go in the opposite direction and go into a seed bead on the other side. Okay, so let me just show you. So that creates a little loop there. And what I would do is reinforce, 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 definitely because this is thread and it's going to be a, a, an area that's going to be open and closed many, many times. Then what, and then you would do the same thing on the other side. You would take a jump ring. And you would put the jump ring on here. Also a jump ring would be on the other side. And then you just add a lobster claw or whatever clasp you want or a toggle clasp or whatever. So that's one way to do it. Okay, but I'm... The way I like to do these turbular beaded um, bracelets is with my wire. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so here's the way I, I do with the wire core. This is an 18 gauge aluminum um, piece of wire. I cut about 10 inches. I did create myself a loop here, but I'm going to show you how to do it again on the other side. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fish this right through. Now, you can also decide to put like a little pearl or a little round bead and put it in there. It gives it a little accent. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it to the shape that I want. Now, this is not a dead soft piece of wire. It is a piece of stainless steel that I bought from Rio Grande. And I think it's probably half hard. And that's why it's more difficult to shape. But I'm going to shape it first so that I don't have any excess, if you know what I mean, at the end. Okay. So, and then my, my uh, piece is always going to be shaped like this. And if anything ever happens to this, let's say this comes apart for whatever reason, it's not all going to fall off and the person's going to lose it. It's going to come apart maybe, okay, if you did a good job and you put it together to you. properly, that won't happen, but it is beads, it is thread, and with a lot of um, wear, sometimes things can happen. So with the wire going through, you don't really have to worry about losing anything. And you know what also would be great? I like to give options. I know I talk a lot, but I like to give options, designer options. Let's say you didn't want to put the toggle clasp here or the lobster claw, and you just want to make a cuff. You can do that with this. It's not, it's, I, I mean, I would probably do it with a larger or larger gauge wire so it doesn't, because this is a little bit too flexible. This is 18 gauge, I would probably go to maybe 14 gauge to make a nice cuff. You know what? That's an idea. Okay, so now what we'll do, I did two wraps over here. So I'm going to take my length here. All we're doing, this is very simple. I have my round nose pliers. I'm just going to right over here, doesn't really matter where, but right here, because I want, don't want too much give. And I'm just going to bend it 90 degrees. See what I did? 
Now, what I'm going to do, I want my loop right about right in the middle, and I'm going to take this wire, and I'm just going to bend it around this loop. Now, what I did was created this neat little loop here. So now I'm going to take, if I had chain nose pliers, which I didn't bring up with me, but I've got these pliers. I'm going to hang on to these pliers here. Sorry, I'm going to hang on to my loop right like this. And then I'm going to take my other pliers and I'm going to, you want this to be Nancy neat. Okay, let me move in. You want this to be very Nancy neat. So just hang on to this piece really tight, okay, over here. You're going to take your other pliers, whether it's your round nose or another pliers, and you're going to grab this and just bring it so the tension's coming up, and then bring it around, and then, sorry, I'm out of frame, you're going to grab it again, and you're going to bring it around again, and if you lose that, just grab it again, and then bring it around, so that these, it just really does sit next to each other. And because my piece is long, I can probably push it with my hand a bit. But now I'm just going to go one more time. See how nice and dense that is? Now I'm going to take my cutters. I'm going to cut very, very close to the piece. But that is not finished. Okay, you do need to take your pliers, chain nose pliers or whatever, and you need to push that in. Very important. Don't miss that step. Okay, so I have my wire in here. I so prefer the wire core. Okay, so now you're going to shape it. I'm just going to put it on my wrist. Here, let me move out, move out. Put on my wrist here. Make sure everything is sitting properly. Ooh, I love this. Then you're going to take your two jump rings. I have a seven millimeter jump ring. Use whatever size you have. It doesn't need to be seven millimeter. Okay, even if it's a larger gauge, it doesn't matter. Put the jump ring on. Let me move in because this is important on how you close a jump ring. You want two pliers and then you will rock it back and forth until it touches and make sure that that piece is, let me just can focus here. Make sure that this is closed. And you do want to get jump, real jump rings because they use um, very hard, well, hard, very hard. It's hard, it's not dead soft. Uh, and it'll be a lot harder to open this up. So this is going to be closed. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And how to open a jump ring. Grab it like this, take your other pliers, and you just twist. Because if you don't open this properly, the jump ring can come misshapen, and you don't want that. You want to have a nice professional piece. Put it on here, and I'm not going to close that yet. I'm going to grab my lobster claw which I had right here. Give me two seconds, I have to find it. All right, found my lobster claw. I will pop that on, my jump ring. And I'm going to take my pliers and close this properly. You don't want any gaps because this can, can come off. That's what I want to hear, a little snap. 
And there you have it. It's done. Let me close this up for you guys so you can take a look. Now, if you didn't get your length, if you didn't get your length that you want, you can add more jump rings and make it a little bit larger. But look at the look at these zigzags. I mean, the way that the beads turn, this looks great. I don't have enough patience to make a, a necklace, but bracelets, I have enough patience. So we, we have our little bit here, then we have our turns. And really, I am very, very happy with this. Now, you know what, now that I have you here and I'm done, see this little thread here? I'm gonna show you how I take care of these threads. So if you have a thread zapper, fantastic. If not, take a lighter. And I have this long thread here. I'm just gonna burn it right down like that. And I'm gonna go through the piece to see if anything is happening here, any threads, and I'm just gonna burn them all down. If not, just cut them very close and get a thread zapper and zap them. Because you did have to add thread here, right? So you're gonna see some thread sticking out. So here's the piece. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed making this. Um, it does take some time and some patience. I had to take beads off and add beads and it really, it took me quite a while to make this piece, but it was all worth it. And I'm going to have some, a written tutorial for this and if anyone's interested I am going to have a kit few kits together different color combinations so that uh, if you don't want to invest in all these beads because you have to buy them like a large amount and then but if you just want to buy the kit and say okay let me see if I like that I'm going to put a few colors together and you can buy the kit okay so thank you so much for watching thank you for your patience and um, I will see you in the next video. If you want to be a part of our uh, closed, bead, uh, closed Facebook group, I do have a beading group that we share our projects together and talk and ask for tips and where are the great sales and all kinds of things for beads. It's called Beading Tips and Tutorials. So I hope you join us and uh, we can make some new friends. So see you at the next video. Bye.